Today I've found some evidence that leads me to believe that Marab Devalishvili could be using EPO. Now I say allegedly, but this is my opinion based on the facts and evidence I've found. Starting with the pre-fight interview on UFC 298 with Marab, where he slipped up when he was talking about his morning routine. Morning training session, I have to organize, which is, I'm, I'm, I'm very busy, I'm going, you know, I, 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 need, I need special coach for this, you know, uh, and anyway, so, so, I, 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 need, I, need, I need special coach for this, you know, uh, and anyway, so, I, 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 need, I need. To understand this, we have to go back to the beginning. And it started with the Ricky Simon fight and that insane submission that Ricky locked up on Marab in the final round and now he never went out. We're not talking about being tapped out or not tapping, We're talking about how this man, Marab, did not go to sleep. The submission was locked in for about 45 seconds and the man went fucking blue. And there's a few explanations and one of those is EPO. So what is epo epo is going to increase your red blood cells what does that do the red blood cells is what carries oxygen throughout the body so the more red blood cells you have the more oxygen oxygen you can get it directly affects your cardiovascular output right it's not going to make you bigger it's not going to make you leaner it's not going to make you stronger it's going to give you more endurance so hear me out here if epo increases the amount of red blood cells which increases the amount of oxygen in the blood. Surely that could mean a man could withstand long submission attempts and not go to sleep. Okay, so maybe it's just one of those freak coincidences that happen in life and in MMA. That's it. That's all there is to it. Only something else came up when I was looking into this, and I'll let my man Chael explain. EPO of all the performance enhancers, I will tell you, personal experience here, right? I'm an expert in performance enhancers for all the wrong reasons, but an expert nonetheless, EPO without question is my favorite. The great Chelsea on in himself, even he admits to taking performance enhancers. And in that statement, he says EPO was the best, bar none. EPO was the one he took and that was his favorite. Chael later goes on to describe how EPO is actually quite hard to, to find and locate. Marab would have to have some known links with ones to get. And I only share with you now it's almost impossible to get. EPO is very rare. Like if you just somebody that could get a hold of it. And now because of USADA, we also know how to take it and not get caught. Not going to say any more on that, but th they're the ones that taught us. They're the ones that told the world how to take it and not get caught. So that answers my next question. If Marab's been taking EPO since 2018 in the Ricky Simon fight, then why hasn't he been caught? Well, Chael explained there that EPO is really hard to actually catch. He goes into a little more detail here. Tough to catch somebody taking EPO because it can wash through your system within 72 hours. Marab is ranked number three for takedowns landed in his UFC career so far. GSP at number one with 90 takedowns and Marab at three with 79. For takedown accuracy, we can see that George St. Pierre is ranked number four with 73.8%. Marab doesn't even rank in the top nine for takedown accuracy. If you've got an eye level of takedowns landed in your UFC career and you've got the accuracy to back it up. That determines some sort of skill level with your takedowns and wrestling. If your takedown accuracy is low and you have a large number of takedowns, then that implies that you're more of an endurance cardio-based athlete, which is what EPO is known for. Let's take a look at Marab's actual stats in fights because I feel like this is an important bit of information that we need to go over. Um, one of those reasons is athletes' performances tend to decrease in the later rounds. They don't tend to be the same or better in the later rounds than the first round or the second round. Marab shows a bit of different data when we look at it. So it will, we'll start with a few fights. We've got Casey Kenny versus Marab de Valishvili. Um, in the all of the fight, Marab threw over 241 strikes with over 24 takedown attempts, only landing 50% of them. And in the later rounds, we can see his output was the same as the second round, a bit down from the first, um, and the same with the takedown attempts, a little a little deflated. So in the John Dodson fight, again, uh, the output for strikes was 171. 
over the whole of the fight and 20 takedown attempts. As we see in the later rounds, Marab threw more strikes in the later rounds than he did in the first and second round and five takedown attempts, which is only down slightly from the previous rounds. Then we move on to the next fight, which was Jose Aldo. Uh, 16 takedown attempts in the whole of the fight, landed zero. Total strike amount was 230, with 135 landed. In the later rounds, Marab threw out over 92 strikes and seven takedown attempts. It, Marab's output in the third round was more than the first and the second. Now, this one is the most interesting one for me, and probably the scariest one that might even back up the claims that we've been talking about. Marab had 49 takedown attempts in a single fight with only landing only landing 11 of those takedowns his strike output was 401 202 landing less than 22 percent uh takedown accuracy in all the fights it was towards the back end of the fight that marab actually stepped up not only his takedown attempts but his strikes as well in rounds four and five Marab threw out 88 and 93 strikes, 8 takedown attempts in the 4th and 12 takedown attempts in the final round. In the 1st and 2nd, 8 and 7. So ju just put that into perspective, 8 and 7. Then in the final fight, Henry Sudo, total output of strikes was 273%, 11 takedown attempts. So again, this one, he started with 50, 59 output strikes in the 1st round. It went up to 94 in the second and then a total of 120 in round three. The same with the takedowns. Two attempts in the first round, four attempts in the second round, five attempts in the third round. What the fuck is going on? The evidence is here, guys. It's right there in front of you. It, I can only allege this. I've got no concrete information. But from every, all the evidence that I've seen, the slip-ups, the, the stats... When you look at how Marab fights in the, the later rounds, how he fucking moves. I've never seen a fighter other than TJ Dillashaw move like he does in those later rounds. So I can only conclude based on the facts that I have found. And that for me is telling me that Marab is using EPO. Now, I love Marab as a fighter. I love him as a person. He's great to watch. He's so fun. I don't blame Marab. Give them all fucking EPO. That's what I say. I'll see you in the next one. So here's to the fighters, the fans on the game. Here's to the blood, sweat and tears on the fame. And here's to Az and Key, you're ready to go on the brutally honest MMA show.